Hey, this is Jordan. What you can see on screen right now is what we'll be making in this tutorial today. This is a super fun drawing tool where whatever you draw gets repeated in a loop. The basis of the code is that when you press down the left mouse button, we'll store the mouse position at every frame, and then use this data to draw the line and work out where the repeated line should be. The setup is super optimized because we only need one object in one room. Let's call them obj underscore control and rm underscore test. The only thing you need to do is place the object in the room. Then in the object, we're going to need a create event to initialize our variables, a step event to track all of the data, and a draw event to actually draw everything to the screen. What makes the code a little bit more complicated is the fact that I want to have multiple sketches on screen at once. Whilst you could probably have simpler code and just instantiate multiple of these objects, I've chosen to make use of some lists and keep everything in one object. So the first thing we're going to do in the create event is create a constructor function called vector2, and this is just going to make new vector2 structs. I've explained this in a previous video, but basically we're making a struct which represents a 2D position. You'll also see in the arguments I'm passing underscore x equals 0 and underscore y equals 0, which just sets 0 as the default for both values. Then I'll make a list called lines, and this will just contain all of our lines. Next, I'm going to make another constructor function, this time for a line struct. The basic setup of all our code is that we have a list of these line structs, and each struct contains its own list which will store all the x and y points that it goes through. Each struct also has an index variable, which tells us how far through drawing the line we are, a len variable which tells us the length of the list, and a draw variable which tells us if we should start drawing the line. Now let's move on to the step event. First up in the step event, we're going to deal with all the mouse events. So on mouse underscore check underscore button underscore press, we're going to create a new line struct and add it to our DS list of lines. Then on mouse check button, when we're holding the mouse button down, we're going to reference the most recently created line struct in the list reference its inner list of positions, and then add the current mouse x and mouse y values to the list represented by a vector2 struct. Finally, on mouse check button released, we'll again reference the most recently created line and set its draw value to true. Now that we're done with the mouse events, we'll loop through all the lines. Again, we can reference the current line and also reference its list. Then we'll set the length variable of the struct to the size of the list minus 1. The reason we're doing this is because to draw the line, we're going to draw from the current point to the next point, and so we don't want to check the next point when we're on the final point. Now we're going to create four variables. Sx and Sy will represent the position of the start point of the line, and Ex and Ey will represent the position of the end point. Next, if the line is able to be drawn, we're going to check that we haven't finished drawing the line and increment the index value. If we have fully drawn the line, then we're going to loop through all of the points and move them all. Basically, the idea is that when the line has finished drawing, we'll move the start point to the end point and restart the loop. Once we've moved all the points, we're just going to reset the index to zero. To finish in this event, we're just going to check if the sketch is outside of the draw room, and if so, then destroy it. We do this by checking if the start and end points aren't inside the room, and then deleting it from the list. Now, moving on to the draw event, we're going to make a simple function called draw line smooth, so that we don't have to write out these two lines inside the function more than once later. The function just takes two points and a width value, then draws a line between the points and draws a circle at the end point to disguise the gap between lines. Next, we're going to loop through all the lines and reference the current line and its list. We're going to do another loop with j from the start of the list to the end. Let's make the same start and end position variables as before. We're also going to make cx and cy, which is basically just the current point, but negatively offset by using the start position. This means that later we can add cx and cy to the start position to work out the current sketch position, but we can also add cx and cy to the end position and work out where the repeated line should be drawn. The same basically applies for nx and ny, but it just references the next point. Now we're just going to initialize the variable w, which will be the width of the lines we draw. We'll also set the draw color to white. Finally, we're going to actually draw the lines. The first thing we're going to do is check if j is greater than or equal to l.index. Once we've started drawing, index starts incrementing from 0, so this check makes it draw all of the line that is above the index value. So as the index value goes up, the start of the line starts disappearing. Now in tandem, we check for the opposite with an else statement, and also if we should start drawing, and then we draw the repeated version of the line. Because of the else statement, we're only drawing bits of the line that are below the index, so that the line gets longer as index goes up. You'll also notice that the variables we're passing into draw line smooth are similar, we're just exchanging the start points for the end points. The reason we don't put if l.draw around both lines is that while we're drawing the initial line, we still want to see what we're doing. Something you might want to do is put it around both functions, and then have an else statement to draw the start line but in a different style. Okay, so now let's run the game and see how everything looks. So what you can see is that as I start drawing, the line is being traced, and then when I let go, it starts repeating. You can see that as soon as I let go, the first line starts disappearing and the next line starts appearing. What you don't see though is that when the index value is at its limit, 
the fully drawn second line disappears and is replaced by a fully drawn first line and the process repeats. So now that everything is working well, we're going to do one final step to make everything look good. Heading back to the draw event, I'm going to start by making a mid variable. It looks complicated, but it's not really. It just tells us how close we are to the middle of the line. We start with one minus because the rest of this equation will return a big number at the ends and a small number in the middle, but we want our line to be thin at the ends and thick in the middle, so by taking away the number, we're left with the inverse values. Next, we use the absolute value, which just returns whatever's inside but positive. The reason for this is that we don't care what side of the middle we're on. Then we get how far away from the middle j is, and we put that over how big the middle is, which gives us a value between 0 and 1 for how close we are to the middle. Now that that's all out of the way, we're just going to say the width is how far away from the middle we are. We're also going to multiply it by 12 to make it a lot thicker, and then we're just going to make sure that the line is at least 1 pixel wide. Finally, we'll use the mid value to set the colour to a blend between yellow and red, so it's yellow at the ends and red in the middle. Now we can run the game again to see the beautified version of our sketch looper. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope it's been helpful. If you've been following along with this tutorial and implementing it for yourselves, I hope you're happy with the result and understand how everything works. If not, please drop a comment and I'll endeavour to fix the bug or explain myself better. Please get creative with this because it's basically just a small art project and you can still add a lot to this. If you do make anything cool, make sure to share it in the comments or tweet it at me. If you want to see more kinds of these videos, please give the video a like, maybe subscribe, maybe hit the notification bell and also leave a comment about the video, about my code or with any ideas for future topics. That's all from me, I'll see you in the next video.